Hey, welcome back to the podcast. I'm Justin Stacey. I'm Nate Thomas. I'm Josh Matney. And we've reached our finale. Uh, unfortunately, ahead of schedule. <laughs> we, we meant to go 10 episodes, but due to scheduling conflicts and just staying busy, we decided let's cut an episode and end with, with Elf. I know, Nate, Elf is probably your favorite Christmas movie, right? Well, what would make you think that? <laughs> what would make you think that? Is it my plethora of elf goodies? Yeah. My elf quote t-shirt. <laughs> my elf hat. Hold on a minute. <laughs> That's an What makes you think elf is my favorite? Yeah. So clearly your favorite. So it's good to end on a Nate movie. <laughs> yeah, because I haven't liked a lot of the ones we've watched. <laughs> It feels like it's been a long season, even though it's just been nine episodes. It's feel, it feels like it's been a long season. A lot of holiday movies we went through. It's been a busy, uh, the holidays are always busy, so there's no way around it. Yeah. Oh, man. Absolutely. I feel like every day there's something else, something else, something else. Yeah. I'm uh, not, not, sounds like I'm whining, but I'm going to preach two Christmas Eve services, two Christmas Day services. I'm so excited for Monday the 26th. I don't even know what to tell you. <laughs> And I'm excited for those due days too, but man, I'm going to take Monday and do nothing. Yeah. I took Monday off as well. Like I'm just going to enjoy another day off. (laughs) Don't blame me a bit. All right. So subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos, share, leave us a comment with that. Sit back, relax, put your feet up as we open a bottle of pop culture. Gonna talk about some really cool stuff. Well, Josh, Nate, and I, we're gonna blow this thing up. We're gonna talk about the movies you love. And if you don't, well, that's just tough. But we're gonna talk about shows that are awesome. You'll say, whoa! Talking about blossom. 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 This will be your one and only stop for everything nerdy in a bottle of culture. All right, so let's jump right into Elf. Nate, you want to kick us off with your favorite parts, your thoughts, your. (laughs) I'd say what I appreciate about Elf is this. Even though it's a fantastic story, like it makes no sense. It is completely, you know, you have to cast aside all disbelief to watch it. It still happens in the real world and you walk away going, huh, all right, that was good. It, it, it's really got no agenda other than loving Christmas. It's really got no agenda other than being good to each other. There's no real message. And Will Ferrell, I would argue, now, this is just me. I would argue that this is Will Ferrell's best role mm-hmm. because there's mm-hmm. not the gross out humor that I despise. There's not the bad language. And, you know, comedy today is let's make as many gross, inappropriate jokes and cuss a lot. And he's guilty of that. I would say this is probably any. my favorite James Conn role, too, because Ooh. I think he does well in comedy. He's always going to be Sonny Corleone to me, but he's right there, <laughs> number two. Uh, and I just, I just like the idea of Elf. This six, what's, what's Will Ferrell? Six foot three. He's a, he's a really tall man. Growing up, I just, I just like the imagery. I like the music. I like the setting. I like the behind the scenes stuff. And the, the movie just it, every time, it, every time I catch it on, that my remote stops moving. <laughs> it's just, it is my favorite because of those things. And I'm sure we'll talk more about it. I just, I love the movie start to finish. Although the the last act, I think, is a little weak. We'll talk about that. Yeah. I, what's interesting to me is this movie feels like a sequel to Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, or at least in the same universe. Just from... And I read that some of the production elements and the background scenes and stuff was taken from Rudolph. Like, it looks like Rudolph. The snowman well, and, and all, all that stuff. So it seems like that, but it also seems like it could be, you know, in the same universe as the Santa Claus, you know. Um, so I, I 
felt like it's a good blending of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, the classic, and the Santa Claus. So it doesn't exist in a vacuum. Yeah. So yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of this movie. It's uh, probably probably one of my favorite Will Ferrell movies. Uh, I like him a lot, but this is what, and this is probably his so, big breakout role too. I would yeah. think. I would say this is his. I think we discussed this once before, but it's like his first real big leading role. Mm -hmm. Like I think they wanted originally um, Jim Carrey for this role, but they went yep. with Will Ferrell instead. And this movie is just so quotable as well. It's you know there's some like I can watch this every year and I look forward to the the throne of lies bit all you know mm -hmm. I say that to people <laughs> it's so funny you sit on the throne of lies and been like you smell like beef and cheese <laughs> yeah and John Favreau was, was this one of his first movies that he produced no. or he Isn't this he right did a, swingers. Yeah, he did a couple of movies before this as a director, but I think this is like his breakout directorial mm -hmm. movie. Because he yeah, did one really with good. Um, Vince Vaughn. And, um, Swingers, I, right? Yeah, I think that was it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, and also this movie has, I love the combination of using the, the old school Christmas movie style at the opening. Like the, like the North Pole is like, stop motion animation all that kind of classic mm -hmm. christmas story image and then like when he gets to the real world it's you know everything is you know real and the technique to do that was actually pretty cool they didn't use cgi for any of the elves it was like the way the angle of the camera was shot to make mm -hmm. it look like will ferrell was really bigger than uh all the other cast members hmm. so i appreciate that they because like CGI, like it wouldn't have aged well with this if they would have just made CGI elves or whatever. What and you gotta mm. love the sight gag of this grown man trying to shower in an elf shower, <laughs> and trying to sit at an elf desk, uh, trying to sit on Papa Elf's lap and being literally twice or more bigger than Papa Elf. The <laughs> the sight gags, you know, they don't you don't you don't draw attention to them. They're just in the movie. They're clever. They're funny. They're exactly what it would be for, you know, I'm not very tall, but for a normal sized person trying to exist in elf land. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm yeah. glad they stayed in the PG realm of this because I feel like it works, you know, not not just for a family film, but like it just works well for any age, really. Like, because I think the original script was a little darker, but they wanted to kind of keep it in the PG realm. And I'm, I'm really glad they did. Because like, I, I feel like if they would have had gross humor, it would have just kind of, been like a novelty of a you know well, movie that watch one watch once and that's well, it you know how often do you see bad santa on tv anymore hardly ever true yeah how often do you see I mean, you do see national lampoon's vacation but you see a very edited version mm -hmm. elf you don't have to edit anything yeah so, and there's a reason the classics and i would this 20 years later I would consider this a Christmas classic. Oh yeah, it's definitely. There's up a there. reason they're on all the time in December. Yeah, because you can put them on, not worry about your kids stumbling across. Like this is one of the films I can literally watch every year, along with How the Grinch Stole Christmas, and yeah. you know, whatever the other, you know, Gremlins, you know, whatever. Gremlins, other Christmas. Yes. <laughs> Josh has Gremlins on his mind tonight, folks. <laughs> and you know the 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 side cast it was top notch in oh, this yeah. movie you already missed, mentioned james Kahn, but you had um a bob newhart and you had Ed Asner as santa claus yes i mean that's classic what was the the girl's name uh, this was kind of her breakout role zoe deschanel yes or is it, zoe. It's, one of the, it's one of the deschanel girls i can't remember yeah. what i think it's, it's zoe right? yeah uh Peter she Dinkler, bones is I'm not sure. I don't. I haven't watched Bones. I didn't like Bones. So mm. she played uh, in her own series right right the after this. The new girl. That's that's one of the new girl. girls. I, yeah. girls. I, I I don't. I'm not really familiar with who was who in that relation. Yeah, and I think this was also one of Peter Dinklage's also one of his few roles that kind of got him noticed too. Well, he's acted a long time. Yeah, but he didn't really break out in anything. You mm -hmm. know, until a little later. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. 
<clears throat> so here's a fun, funny uh, side fact, I guess. Um, the the Jack in the Box scene where Will is is <laughs> testing the Jack know. in the Box. I love it. Uh, yeah. Apparently, they had those remote controlled, and Favro would actually be the one to enable it. So Will did not know when it was going to jump out, and right. it was just added to the element of surprise. <laughs> And really, that's pretty good. It is pretty good. That is pretty good. Yeah. Well, has, I think we'll. Sorry. Oh, I was gonna say that has to be one of my favorite bits of the whole movie. Mm -hmm. Like aside from the throne of lies, but just that Jack in the Box. I'm just like, it, it's yep. it's so great. Well, from from the beginning of the movie, all the way until the scene with Peter Dinklage, all the way, and what's that? An hour and ten minutes in, maybe. You you want to watch it without looking away. Mm -hmm. because oh, there's all the stuff with him at the North Pole. Then he comes into the city. You know, he travels through the sea of swirly, twirly gumdrops mm -hmm. and then through the Lincoln Tunnel and he comes out into the city. And They did guerrilla filmmaking. They didn't tell anybody they were making a movie. Will Ferrell just walked around New York City and they filmed him. That's when he goes up to the guy on the street and says, Santa, and the guy pushes him away. That's legit. Oh, the guy wow. was ready to fight. Um, but then, you know, he finds his dad and he meets Zovi and he decorates the store and Santa comes and he gets in a fight with Santa. Then he goes out on the date, you know, even him decorating the tree at his dad and stepmom's house. It, it never stops. It's worth watching. The scene in the mail room, which we forget about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Hilarious. <laughs> he puts his hand up to the pipe. He pulls it off. <laughs> then he puts it back. Because you're like, <laughs> Will, Will Ferrell, and you guys will know this. When he was on Saturday Night Live for those seven years from what, 90, 96 to 2003 or 97 to 2004, yeah. he played the lovable idiot. Mm -hmm. Will Ferrell plays the lovable idiot today, just a little differently. And I don't mean that as an insult, but he, he has that wide-eyed look that he's you buy into what he's doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And the, the innocence that you see, and look, I, look, he's not innocent. He knows what he's doing. But it's just, it's so good the whole first half or more of the movie, you can't pick, or I can't pick a favorite scene. I think it's all so strong. Yeah. And like the movie doesn't, doesn't seem like it stays, like overstays itself either. Like it I really think. just feels like it goes by and it's entertaining. Like it doesn't get really boring at all. <laughs> That's I mean, the, the end, I will say like, you know, there are those Christmas movie tropes in it, like towards the end, like the spirit of Christmas and all that, but like my least favorite part. The everything is executed really well to make it, you know, still a good film. Yeah, I I like when he first gets to to New York, and was it Santa Claus? Somebody warned him about the the gum, to not eat the gum. <laughs> to not eat the gum. And then he yes. he he does, and then he starts eating all of it. <laughs> oh. I like where he runs into the coffee store that says "World's Best Cup of Coffee." He's like, "Congratulations, you." <laughs> And yeah. again, it's another, they didn't know he was coming. That's why they asked to look at him like he's stupid. Yeah. It's just funny. Uh, uh, Will Ferrell stuck in a revolving door could be on a continuous loop on my TV. It's so <laughs> stinking funny. Yeah. I love like the dynamic between like, you know, you got Buddy, the very optimistic, high energy. Oh, no, no. And, and then you got like, his dad, who is very serious, very mm -hmm. business oriented. And it's like such a great back and forth between like being, you know, the typical straightforward dad. And then you got the son who's like all over the place. It's so great. It is great. I agree. And I honestly don't see who they could have picked to play the dad either. Like James Conn just does so well. He nailed those it. Roles. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think the overall narrative of, the movie, you know, having a son reunite with his father and that end up being the, the children's book that they wrote of, of Elf. And I, I just thought that was such a good narrative for the entire movie. Mm -hmm. I agree. You know, a good Christmas, you know, themed inspirational movie. Uh, it could be, be a Hallmark movie almost. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Hallmark's really controversial. <laughs> That's true. No, like, yeah. It, it it one if it was a Hallmark movie, it doesn't have the the blonde girl out of. That's like, true. You got to have the relationship. Girl, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Um, Where is the lumberjack who answers all of the girls' secrets? <laughs> awesome. I can do my own. Um, the, my, the movie slows down for me when Santa crash lands in Central Park. Mm. And like in the last 20 minutes of the movie, or maybe a little less, you now have these new villains on horseback riding through the park, the Central Park Rangers. You have Santa, you have Buddy, you have this whole other movie mm-hmm. that is, it doesn't really go with the rest of the film. In my opinion, that's just my opinion. Not that Santa didn't need to be in it, but like that whole part at the end just kind of feels like a different film completely. Mm-hmm. They're running around, mm-hmm. they're starting to sing. No, they're not. Nobody believes. And then finally, I can't remember James Conn's character, so we'll call him James Conn. He starts to sing, and you're like, oh, is this the sequel? Is this another film? It doesn't flow. And then right after that, it goes back to the conclusion of Elf mm-hmm. with the publishing of the book. That's a good point. A baby. It, I, just, I just think it doesn't fit. I think because it's a Christmas movie, they almost tried to force Santa Claus into it. Right. He, and he really didn't need to be in this movie other yeah, than I just think. a few cameo parts in the North Pole. That's all he needed. Right. I mean, it doesn't ruin the movie or anything like that. Right. But I, I just feel like that is, un- the, you know, the, 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 the whole part in Central Park always makes me think we're watching something different. Mm-hmm. It does have a shift in comedic tone for a yeah. little bit. It kind of does go towards a little a touch of that darker comedy, like with the, the people on horsebacks. And it's like, right. It, all, it, gets it kind really of gets a little War of the Ringsy for a second, like. But uh, yeah, I, I, I guess I can see that now. I never really thought of that much until, you know. I, I guess I just never really noticed that it kind of shifted like that. Mm-hmm. So you also have the the cameo appearance of uh, Peter Billingsley, Ralphie from Christmas right. Story, being mm-hmm. the head elf, or. Uh, Ming the Elf, I believe. And how many viewings did it take for me to realize that? A lot. <laughs> well, I hate a Christmas story, so I didn't know it until I read it. <laughs> I will never watch a Christmas story again. A Christmas story, Christmas, was actually pretty good. I was surprised. It really was. Yeah. Good to know. Don't care. Not watching it. <laughs> don't care. Not watching it. <laughs> don't care. I'm talking about Elf. <laughs> I do have to admit, I think I think it's really sweet scene in the the steam room. The lock, it's a locker room where uh, uh, the De Chanel girl's character, Zovi, is that right? Uh, where she's singing, like "Baby, it's cold outside," mm-hmm. and Buddy overhears her and very innocently goes into the ladies' locker room. Yep, and just sits and sings. And sings with. Her. Yep. But I think it's sweet, you know how that happens. And then now she gets mad, of course, like any reasonable lady would. But then he makes it up to her. I think their date is sweet, mm-hmm. where he's like, okay, we're going to have the world's best cup of coffee. <laughs> you know, and they take it, they do the revolving doors thing again. Mm-hmm. He sees the big tree. I just think, it, I just think it's, a, it's a sweet part of the film. It is. Yeah. I think it's nice how that hardened New Yorker takes a liking to that special needs adult man in the elf costume. <laughs> He, he, he wants he wants to add uh, syrup to everything. Right. <laughs> one of, the, one of the, the three major food groups. <laughs> well, I can tell you right now. It's on my commemorative elf plate. <laughs> Four major, syrup, yep. Candy corn, candy, candy canes, and syrup. There we go. <laughs> we elves try to stick to the four main food groups. <laughs> I've never actually used this. I got it in a like a loot crate box, and I've never used it. Cause it's too nice to get dirty. I thought the uh, the snowball scene was pretty funny. Like he just gets all super commando with it. And oh my like... goodness, it's so <laughs> funny. The kid running and Buddy takes the snowball. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> he took no prison. So um, something else interesting about this movie is the the store name Gimbals. Mm-hmm. So that is a throwback to the Miracle of 34th Street. Oh and yeah, that, w- that was the name of the the department store there, which was a legit department store back then. But it closed down. It looks like 1987, and uh, basically Macy's took 
took it out. And, and so what they did in the movie is they converted Macy's into Gimbal's. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's pretty interesting. <laughs> kind of a fun fact. Uh, what else we got? To this day. Well, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I was announcing for the, the Christmas market here on, on Main Street in Tazewell. That's not a cheap plug. I'm just giving some background. And I'm like, all right, guys, don't forget, 11 o'clock today, guess who's going to be on Main Street? Santa himself. I know him. I know him. And a guy across the street was like, I get that. I get that. <laughs> so, I mean, just those quotes, of course, you know, Buddy goes crazy that he knows Santa. But... It's so fun. It's so quotable. Mm -hmm. Buddy Elf, what's your favorite color? I like smiling. Smiling's my favorite. My favorite. You know, those... My absolute favorite. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the, it's so quotable. And I guess because I like the movie, I'm kind of gushing over it. That's what you do with movies you like. Yeah. Movies that you don't like, you criticize. I mean, yeah, I mean so... it's, such a, it's such a memorable, like, it stands out among so many, like, just forgettable Christmas films. Like, every year. It how shouldn't many... be what it is. Yeah. And, like, I don't think they expected or just, you know, the studio to see it be, be as big as it is. And, like, it, it's, it's grown such a huge thing. Like, it's – they keep pushing for a sequel, but I'm kind of wishing they don't do a sequel. Will Ferrell says he won't do it. No, he said he yeah. won't do it. Yeah. Well, no wonder. The only sequels he's ever done, Anchorman 2 was awful. Yeah, <laughs> it wasn't as good. Awful. Anchorman 1 is only fun because it's so dumb. It's so yeah. quotable and dumb. I mean, look, he knows he knows the sequel is just a cash grab. There's oh, yeah. nothing wrong with that. But Will Ferrell does seem to have some of that artistic integrity. Yep. Mm -hmm. Agreed. And, like, again, it's like, it's such a, what is it, 20 years old almost? The film's It'll almost 20, 20 years next old. Year. 20 like, next year, yeah. This, I think after a while, like, if it hasn't happened yet, I don't think we should work, have a sequel. Especially Agreed. something like this. Like, I feel like with Star Wars and maybe stuff like it's okay because I don't think it really matters. But like for stuff like this, it like it's not a franchise, you know. Well, it's stuff that's part of a larger story mm -hmm. is different, right? Mm -hmm. And like what I mean, other, what other than like what's already been done? Like what could you expand on this besides him being like what have, being a dad now? And it's like well, I, that's what, in my opinion, killed the Santa Claus franchise. You know, I was perfectly fine with just having the one movie. And then we had to have, you know, their life in, at the North Pole and start adding all these other characters, these fantastical characters like Jack Frost and whoever else. The, the and, second Santa Claus, fine. Yeah. And it's, it's the Mrs. Claus. I got that. But, man, that third one was brutal. Yeah. To be and, honest, I forgot there was a third one till like, yeah. <laughs> till we were, were like, discussing Not Martin Short's film. best movie. Yeah. So I, I wasn't a fan. I, I mean, two was okay, I guess, but I wasn't a fan of three. Um, the Santa Clauses, I've got through a few episodes. It's okay. I uh, it's, it it's just, it seems unnecessary. <laughs> like, I'm perfectly fine with just the one movie. And with, they're making another that. season of that. Are they really? I read the other yep. day it's already been greenlit, which I guess doesn't technically mean it's going to happen. Mm. Yeah. I digress on that. Yeah. What, anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so I back to like, Elf. <laughs> I didn't initially like this film when I first saw it, but uh, not because like I thought. I guess I just wasn't a fan of Will Ferrell at the time, and mm. like I think after like watching it for like the second time, like really watching it, I was like, okay, this is a great film. Oh my goodness! And I think what made me a fan of Will Ferrell and kind of was like a whatever. Whenever Talladega Nights came out, I can't remember mm. what year that that was before or after. I think that kind of made me a fan of Will Ferrell. So I'm thinking it was after this movie, wasn't it, or was it before? What Probably was? was Talladega Nights. Yeah, because that that, that, that would make sense because this is his first leading role, so I guess mm -hmm. it would be after this. Yeah. Old School came out in February of 2003, and that was like he had been in movies, but that was kind of emerging. You know, mm -hmm. if you'll remember old school, he was Frank the Tank, and he went streaking, and he was kind of the breakout character, in my yeah. opinion, or whatever that term would be. Elf came out that fall, and suddenly Will Ferrell was a movie star. Anchorman came out the next year. Okay, so. I was just looking at IMDb's on the way I made it. 
my favorite roles of Will Ferrell in Saturday Night Live is um, his George Bush impressions. I really enjoyed that in the early 2000s. And uh, Celebrity Jeopardy. Oh, yeah. Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> oh, I, I just love Celebrity Jeopardy. <laughs> There's so many Sean Connery bit. Uh, it <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, I'm Turd Ferguson. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, but yeah. that's Norm yeah. MacDonald. Right. Yeah. yeah, I guess it wasn't really it, – it's just Celebrity Jeopardy in general. You know, he played uh, Alex Trebek, but he did – I, I guess he, he wasn't – what made that great it was the i guess the co the co-stars yeah. but i just always I, it's iconic i think it is it is i always liked him as the cheerleader the male cheerleader mm. yeah that was good you too. know surprisingly like i do even though he's so i'm just so used to seeing him playing like the kind of the goofy optimistic roles like I think the roles where he's like super, like trying to be the super serious straight edge can be like uh, daddy's home. I think he does great in that. And the other guys with he's Mark Wahlberg. Mm-hmm. And also him and Mark Wahlberg has like the best community. They have good chemistry well. together. Mm-hmm. Like I think where I, th- I think they can like rip off each other so well. And that's what I appreciate. About- I think that's another thing that kind of annoyed John. Uh, is it John Favreau? Is that, is it like the director of elf? Like mm-hmm. Will Ferrell would, skew away from the scripted lines and kind of ad lib a lot and mm-hmm. it kind of bugged them about it hmm. but i think it worked out i think if it will ferrell didn't throw in his like you know ad libs and his his randomness it wouldn't have i think it, it wouldn't have added that touch of it right. that we like true true gifted comedians can ad lib and add to the script and the story yeah it's the ones who think they're clever that can't it's robin true. williams will ferrell um they say kevin hart you know they they just they're good at drifting and then coming back and some directors hate it yeah Mm -hmm. to me it's like if you're really into a row and it just feels like it should add that like if you're going to be involved in a character why not try to add live at least kind of you know a little bit it's true like i mean it's easier in comedy but like i couldn't see that in like a typical drama or whatever but like i do feel like comedy is like the area where people can do that the easiest i mean and something i appreciate about comedians in general that you know they base their career around comedies when they do dramas it stands out mm-hmm. you know the, most, of the time. most of the time right i think adam sandler does a good job with with dramas i think uh, i mean jeff daniels i don't I would argue that he's more of a dramatic actor than a comedian. Mick Daniels is a dramatic yeah. actor. Yeah. Even though, but like, I was really I was only guy. familiar with him because of Dumb and Dumber. Like, that was probably the first movie I ever seen of Jeff Daniels. What? But, yeah. What? <laughs> it, was, it was, and then it was after that I watched Fly Away Home and, you know, oh, some of yeah. his other. That, that's a good movie. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah, same words as Jim think, Carrey. You know, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, that's my bad. Jim Carrey, whatever you're saying, I'm down. But, like, yeah, you know, I think the first sort of dramatic role that he did was what the Truman Show was like a drama, a dramedy. Like, yeah. it was more of a drama a comedy mm-hmm. than just a Yeah. Story, you know, so I, I think that kind of showed his, he should have had his ability. Nominations for the Truman Show. Yeah. He was so good in it. Mm. Well, and for that matter, if you want to talk about Jim Carrey, I don't know if you've ever seen a movie he made in like 2001 called The Majestic mm, no, about a, yeah. a, a, a a screenwriter that was blacklisted because of the Red Scare mm. with Joe, Mc, Joe McCartney, McCarthy, excuse me. And so he moves to this small town. He kind of has amnesia. He falls in love. He builds a theater called The Majestic. It's, it's a dramatic role. He's really strong in it. Yeah. Man in the Moon where he plays Andy Kaufman. Oh, I... That was break like that there, would. I, I'm sure no excuse for Jim Carrey not having some awards for that. That's true. That was a brilliant movie. Mm-hmm. And actually, he's also one of the actors that don't do sequels either. I think Sonic is one of the few exceptions mm-hmm. where he came back as a character. Ace Ventura is the only one I can think of. Oh, yeah. Yep. Ace Ventura. Yeah. The only other one. Yeah. And I think, I think that's a smart move because, like, if you know it's not like if you, if you know it's just a ca- easy cash grab coming up, you, you know, just, Wait. yeah. We're forgetting he also did Dumb and Dumberer. 
Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That was, that was such a cash grab, and it was awful, and I don't think it did well. It didn't perform well either. I don't think they talk about it. No. <laughs> no. Didn't happen. You you cannot talk about Bruno. Those guys don't talk about that movie. Yeah. <laughs> but I think I think Will Ferrell has it in him to be a, a strong, dramatic actor. I really do. Mm -hmm. We may never see it. He has got some acting chops. He There is one drama sort of that he – and I can't remember what the title is, but um, – and I'll forget it. You talking about Stranger tomorrow. Than Fiction? Maybe that's Where it. Where he hears the narrator of his own life? I believe that's it, yeah. It's – it's quirky, but it's good. Yeah. Hmm. How'd you like and, from those clues how Josh and I were on the same team? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty good. I and remember, if I ever had to like go back, like make a list of my favorite Christmas films, Elf is like top five easily for me. Yeah. I, I would I would agree yeah. with that. Cause it's, I mean, I about can watch this favorite. every year and not, you know, and like enjoy it still. It, like it just, it's that good. I'm yeah, trying to it, think about my other favorite Christmas. Films. Yeah, that's what I was thinking of. My other favorite. I love Christmas the original movie. Santa Claus with Tim Allen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, I really like the movie White Christmas with Bing Crosby and Danny Kaye, and that I like it. Yeah. Um, Mine will be the you know Christmas Vacation. That's Christmas Vacation yeah, is that's, probably that's, my number one. One of my favorites, oddly enough. Yeah. And uh, I don't dislike it. It's just not in my top five or six. You know. Mm -hmm. I have to think about it. Mine would be the Grinch, the Jim Carrey's Grinch. I mean, I know it's some people hate it, but I love that film. Like, I like I it have, too. Yeah. I have no real strong feelings. I'm just not crazy about it. Yeah. So here's a here's a movie that is probably in, in no one's list. You don't even think about it being a Christmas movie. Is Nicolas Cage Family Man? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. It's oh, one it's of my favorites. Doors theory. <laughs> yes, yes. Such a good movie and. You know, you're you're rooting for him to be able to keep that life, and I uh, uh, then he doesn't. <laughs> I was dating a girl. Let's see, that movie came out. Then I was dating a girl the next year, and she wanted to, me to watch it. Mm -hmm. and she kept talking about how good it was. Well, I got sucked into the movie. And the movie ends, and I'm just as teary eyed as can be. You know, yeah. <laughs> what's he going to do? What's going to happen? Yep. And uh, I've watched it since. It doesn't get the same reaction out of me now. But that is a strong, movie. strong movie. One of Nicolas Cage's better performances. I bet you guys won't remember from like 1985 or 1986, Dudley Moore plays an elf in Santa Claus the movie. Nope. It starts nope. in like the 1200s with Santa and Mrs. Claus getting lost, mm -hmm. and then the North Pole magic taking them to the North Pole, making them Mr. and Mrs. Claus through the centuries. And then like John Lithgow is the villain who wants to take Santa's magic and corrupt. It, you know, look, it's 40 years old, it's cheesy. You ever get a chance to watch it? It's worth a watch. Hmm. Really cool. I know. I mean, when I was growing up, I, I always looked forward to the Christmas cartoon episodes. Right. So Flintstones, Jetsons, Scooby Doo. You know. How did the Flintstones celebrate Christmas? I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I mean, that's not me being a jerk, but I was like, it, it doesn't make any sense at all. But yeah. All of the the Hanna Barbera shows that they would do Christmas episodes of that was that was kind of my tradition watching those. Well, and it used to be that every show had a Christmas episode mm -hmm. every year. Mm -hmm. Hell, didn't like Star Wars have a Christmas special or something like holiday yeah, special? Like, yeah, or... about it, <laughs> yeah. Well, Guardians had its holiday special this year. I liked it. It was okay. I, I'm trying to watch it. Corbin wouldn't allow it, so. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna try and watch it tonight good stuff any final thoughts for elf highly uh, recommend yeah highly definitely it should become a staple in your christmas tradition <laughs> all right good stuff well you know i guess that really wraps up our season probably never <laughs> see you guys again never see <laughs> <laughs> this is where i, I finally decide to do my own spin off and kind of go on my own now. There you go. The job. Ooh, the Matney Files. Matney Files. Matney Minutes. Oh, that is, it is. That's what it is. Matney Minutes. <laughs> but, uh, you and know, it's Nate been a. Rants. That's what I want to do. Nate Rants. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, it's been a fun, fun season going through all these holiday movies. So, you know. The next I'm, season, documentaries, folks. Documentaries. 
<laughs> I'm okay with that. I, I think it'd be I fun. The dock, but yeah. Yeah. I, we'll obviously discuss what the next season and when the next season's going to be. I'm not sure the timeline or the topic, but we will discuss that. And French avant garde films. <laughs> I don't know what any of those words mean, so we better post it to social media when we know. But thank you all for tuning in. And I'm going to end with our final closing quote from Elf. Oh, man. This is a buddy quote. I planned out our whole day. First, we make snow angels for two hours. And then we'll go ice skating. And then we'll eat a whole roll of Toe House cookie dough as fast as we can. And then to finish, we'll snuggle. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See ya. Thank you so much for tuning into the podcast. We hope that we were able to entertain you at least for a spell. If you see value in our craziness and want to continue supporting us, please follow us on social media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos, and share our content with someone you may know. Also, let us know how we're doing. Make suggestions for the podcast. Leave us a comment. Heck, send us an email. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time on the Bottle of Pop Culture podcast.